All right. Now we're going to do what is called minimized calls. That's what I was just playing. Sounds really complicated, but I was just doing it fast. And I wasn't playing the full chords. I was playing the minimized version of the chords. So I could change really fast, add a fast rhythm to it, and it sounds spectacular. What these minimized chords are really handy for is if you play in a covers band like I do, you'll find you play for like four hours on a regular basis. So minimizing what you actually have to do on stage is quite helpful to reserve your energy for performance. All right. So we're going to start looking at these chords. They have many names. Some people call them improv chords. Some are named after individuals. I often call them Louis chords because the guy that taught me how to play these, his name was Louis. And it changed me as a player. It meant I could concentrate on playing rock star and performing. So they're quite simple. You you actually already have learned the shapes. The shape is based on a G chord. And so the G chord with both fingers at the bottom, and I'm talking about third fret on the E string and third fret on the B string, they stay there the whole time and it keeps it very interesting. And they're, they're there endlessly. All you're moving is these two fingers here. So, we start with the G shape. Exactly how you know it, except this finger isn't playing. Simply put, this finger is playing the G note at the top on the E string, on the third fret. The string below it, the A string, is being deadened by the fatty bit of your finger, so it's muted. Sounds like that. So when you strum, you're not even hearing. If you hit it hard enough, it can give a percussive sound. Okay. And so that's a G chord, just like any other. Sounds like I'm playing G. The next one is, is pretty much the same shape, except you move from the G note down on the A string down to C on the A string. So your third fret in playing the C note. If you haven't noticed I've got a capo on, you can play this with or without a capo. But it gives you, if you go back to your capo lesson, this gives you any key you want. So, the C, it's the same technique, and it's almost the same shape. So you're playing from the C, the A string, down. You're not playing the E. The string below the A string, the D string, you're muting it just like you did prior with the G shape. It should sound like that. So you've got two very a very common change. So you have two choices for a D chord. One is this, which is basically D with an F sharp bass. Used in very famous songs like this. 
zombie by the cranberries. And if you watch a lot of covers bands, they're only just playing D because they don't realise. And that's the chord that's been played. Okay, and it's simple. It's almost the same thing. I would say use finger number one and you're playing the second fret on the E string, which is an F sharp note. If you want to use it okay, right. And that's basically a D chord. You're deadening the A string. It should sound like that. You can also play it open, so that you hear the A. The other choice of playing D is coming down and playing a D sus, still just using the same finger. You come right down to the G string in the second fret. So you'll see the D shape there, but you're playing there. All right. That shape can go straight to that shape, where you bend your finger to play two strings, or dead in the string below. So you're going to an open A string, the string below, which is D, and the string below that, which is G, and both the second fret. So you can either play that or deepen it on the G string. And that is a form of A. It works as A or A minor, depending whether you're in D or G. Okay. One more chord. Because technically, that chord and that chord are both there. They're just two very different ways of playing. Okay, next chord is a form of E minor. So, your number one finger goes to the B, the second fret of the A string. And again, you dead in the D string. And that's right below. You deaden it with the fatty bit of your finger. Alright, so now you can put these together in any way you like. And I'd say ad lib, write a song even. The way I learned to play was I got a chord chart and threw some courses together that I could play reasonably well and wrote some lyrics to go over the top and made it into a song as soon as I could. And every time I learned a new trick, I'd write a song around that trick. And that's how I learned to play. So I challenge you to do the same thing. Try it. Write a song. Take these chords that I've shown you because they're not mine and they weren't Louis before me. But write something around them and email it to me if you wish. jbedford at rocketbandhire.co.nz. I'd love to hear your songs. All right. This is another Louis chord, shortened chord, cheats chord, whatever you like to call it. This is another one that will come in handy when playing Bach chords. So an A major shape chord looks like this. 
And what it is, is you're playing the A string open. You're playing the D string on the second fret. You're playing G string on the second fret. And B string on the second fret. And E open. That is a simple, normal, basic A chord. And if you're playing bar chords, you will be expected to use that anywhere on the fretboard and add the bar. Okay? I have a simpler method in which you can use in the bar shapes. And it's a, an improv chord. It goes like this. See? Sounds exactly the same as that. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm playing all the same notes. I'm playing exactly what I'm supposed to play. What I'm doing is bending this finger. Finger number three, I'm bending so that it's touching the three notes I'm supposed to play and bend up in a manner that the open E will still sound. Okay. And that is a chord, the A shape chord. Is, a bar, is known as a bar chord. So you can move that anywhere up and add the bar. When we get to the bar chord section of the course, you will see what all of those are.